So here we have the Stuart McDonald uh, clamping um, setup, and I love it, and I, and I really use it to do final steps that make everything really precise. Here's what happens. When, I've, when I laminated the fretboard onto the neck block, the neck block is a big square piece of wood, and then we radiused the fretboard. It was dead straight at that point. But then, when I come along and I cut out this arc and I shape it and remove material, you change the stress, stress level on, this, on the fretboard. Anytime you change a, a parallel surface, concave or convex, it has an effect on the fretboard. So now, after I've done all this shaping, and especially as I've shaped the neck into the body, this fretboard is not perfectly flat. There's gonna be a little hump here, there's a little dip here, a little dip there. It's not going to be perfectly flat. So I want to bring that back to true flatness before I fret it. Because ultimately, I want this fretboard to be able to be absolutely fr flat, the frets absolutely flat, so that when you set, do the setup, the strings can come as close as possible, make it easy to play, no fret buzz, no high frets, low frets. Anyway, that's what this jig does. These, these things that look like it's a steam operated machine, it's really, all those are doing is, as I set everything up, it tells me that I've stayed at true flatness. And I have, um, I have a machined ruler that costs about $100, and it is absolutely dead flat, straight, machined. So I have a thing to check in, and I go back and forth and really look and see if I see little bits of light gap underneath. I mean it's microscopic but if it's there you want to fix it. So what I do, I take some chalk and um, I go across the fretboard and make marks. Like this way. I take another uh, beam that's been machined to really true flatness and you can stick um, uh, an adhesive uh, sanding paper on one side. And I'm going to go back and forth very gingerly. And what, what obviously you're going to try to do is sand away all the chalk marks. And as, if a chalk mark is still there, that means it's a low point and you have to keep sanding. So I'm going to start going back and forth. This is pretty fine sandpaper, so I'm not taking off very much material at all. So we're checking. Also, I can see a little shiny spot here on the wood and up here. That tells me that my sandpaper is not hitting that quite yet. And as I'm sanding, I'm keeping the sanding bar aligned with the way the, the fretboard widens out so that uh, uh, I'm not changing the contour of anything. Just a little bitty dip there. Now what I've found is that you don't have to do this because you can uh, take it all out on the frets themselves. You, if you can compensate the frets but make it with my philosophy is if you've got 360 steps on a base and you do every one of them right, then everything after that point is easier. If step number 210 is not quite there, you can bet from 211 to maybe all the way up to 360, everything after that point will be a little bit harder. So I'm in the moment. This is Zen to me. I'm, I'm like every single thing I'm focused on trying to do it until it's perfect at every stage. That's pretty good. The chalk marks are pretty much gone and you know you, you don't you don't want to, to take off very much material at all at this point. You want to just be taking the barest bit that you can to get it perfectly true. So now that I've done that, we'll, we'll go put some frets in and I'll show you what's involved in the fretting process.